Good morning to the Commonwealth. This is Young Honey with Raw Dog Radio, bringing you the greatest old-time radio station since the bombs fell. If you're just tuning in, welcome. We're going to be hitting you with an arrangement of ragtime, unabridged stories, and other old-world medias just for you to fall asleep to or relax to. I'd like to send a specific thank you to publicdomainreview.org and archive.org for organizing and compiling all of this media. If you would like to listen to the standalone media, we have included a link in the description. Our last series followed the Frontier Man, but we're going to switch gears to the Adventures of the Falcon. Hailing from the 1940s, the hard-boiled spy drama is now around 80 years old. If you can provide proof of your existence when it released as a syndicated radio series, I will personally come visit and cook you a continental breakfast. Without further ado, let's get to listening.
Good morning to the Commonwealth. This is Young Honey with Raw Dog Radio, bringing you the greatest old-time radio station since the bombs fell. If you're just tuning in, welcome. We're going to be hitting you with an arrangement of ragtime, unabridged stories, and other old-world medias just for you to fall asleep to or relax to. I'd like to send a specific thank you to publicdomainreview.org and archive.org for organizing and compiling all of this media. If you would like to listen to the standalone media, we have included a link in the description. Our last series followed the Frontier Man, but we're going to switch gears to the adventures of the Falcon. Hailing from the 1940s, the hard-boiled spy drama is now around 80 years old. If you can provide proof of your existence when it released as a syndicated radio series, I will personally come visit and cook you a continental breakfast. Without further ado, let's get to listening. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Twilight. I'm glad you called. I'll have to have a rain check, Angel. Army intelligence is flying me to Athens, Greece. Yeah. Seems some boy over there is proud of his marksmanship, and they figure I'll give him something to shoot at. Once again, the National Broadcasting Company brings you the transcribed Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. The Adventures of the Falcon, dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves the case of the gorgeous Greek. The boy who first gave out with the line, appearances can be deceiving, had something there. As a case in point, I'd like you to meet Theodoros Gunario. Monsieur Gennario was a chubby little character who just walked into the Café Olympia in Athens. To look at him as he makes his way to a table in the corner, you'd think, here was a man who wouldn't hurt a fly. And you'd be right, which puts the local flies away ahead of his fellow men. Ah, Nicholas, my good friend, it's great pleasure for to see you. Unfortunately, I can't say the same. You know this isn't wise, Gennario. Suppose the police see us together. So? Who else knows Nicholas Venizelos is number one man in Communist Party in all Greece? A position you obviously feel much better qualified to hold. Oh, you are wrong, Nicholas. I think you are best man for job. I once tell Comrade Molotov, if it can help the party, uh, Nicholas Venizelos would cut off his hand up to here. Never mind, Gennario. Did you see Iris Richards? Oh, yes. Uh, we have a very nice talk. She knows why she was brought to Athens? Of course. For to become good friends with General Deliani. Well, our Bulgarian comrades would like to know why they weren't advised that Greece would defend the island of Gamma from their attack. <laughs> they find out different, huh? The situation seems to afford you some amusement. Well, after all, I am Greek. So am I. Oh, it's different for you, Nicholas. Your whole family is living in England for a long time. I'm still a Greek, but I'm a communist first. Why didn't Iris inform us of General Dignani's plan? How did she know when she has not seen him? Why not? He was interested in her? Yes, but uh, she's not interested in him. What? Oh, you must not be too hard on girl, Nicholas. But uh, <laughs> she is in love. That isn't funny, Gennario. No, it's very sad. But love is feeling very difficult to control. She is to give up this man at once. I say this to her, but she finds it very hard. Well, if Comrade Richard hasn't enough self-discipline to give him up, we'll have to do it for her. Get rid of him. Get rid of him? You seem to take a strange delight in misunderstanding me, Gennario. You don't understand, Nicholas. To get rid of this young man is a very difficult problem. This is not boy we can drop in Mediterranean and nobody will ask questions. I don't care who he is. I want it done. <laughs> then maybe you do it yourself. You have best chance. What are you talking about? This young fellow Iris fall in love with is your brother, George. What? Oh, she's real crazy for him, Nicholas. You're lying. It's easy enough to find out. Why don't you ask Iris? I will. Oh, I'm so happy. Imagine, five years I know you, and this is first idea you take from Gonario. Maybe someday i give you some more. <laughs> Yes, 
a second. Iris Richards. That's right. I wonder if you could spare me a few minutes. I'm Nicholas Venizelos. Oh. Obviously, you're familiar with the name. Obviously. Come in. Thank you. Hmm. Very lovely sweet. I like it. All right, Mr. Venizelos. Let's get on with it. Pardon? You came here for a reason. Naturally. I understand you're in love with my brother, George. Where do you understand that from? The usual reliable source. Have I been misinformed? No. You care a great deal for him. More than anything else in the world. You know, oddly enough, I believe you. I'm overwhelmed. I'd like to tell you a little about our family. Don't bother. George has already briefed me. Why don't you leave him alone? You must understand, Iris. My brother is very young. He's 29. He's still a child in many ways. Maybe that's because you never gave him a chance to grow up. Perhaps I should explain. I'm very fond of George. And he hates you. That's not true. You'd better open your eyes, Mr. Venizelos. He can't stand you. You've interfered with everything in his life. Someone had to. This situation proves it. Meaning I'm not good enough for him? If you prefer to believe that, that's your privilege, but I order you to give him up. You order me? Yes. Oh, you've got the wrong girl. On the contrary, I've got the right one. Does George know you're a common form agent? What? That you're in Greece on party business. You're, you're crazy. Your contact here is Theodora Scenario. Why, you... You're a comrade yourself. My party card bears the name of Paul Papalus. You're, you're Papalus? Yes. Oh, but I had no idea. Naturally. You... Gennario is the only one in Greece who knows. The party is outlawed here. Please, comrade, may I say something? No. But I'd, I'd like to explain. You couldn't possibly. You were sent here on an important mission. To date, you have betrayed that trust. I feel my brother is responsible. You are never to see him again. Is that understood? I ask you something, Iris. But what can I tell him? That you were just using him to pass the time of day. No. No, I, I can't do it. And I say you will. Good day, comrade. I know I can depend on you to fulfill your obligation. I guess we better start looking for a parking place, Iris. What? Well, I, I'd love to drive you right into the Acropolis, but unfortunately the road hasn't been paved since 500 B.C. Ah. Shall we get out? Wait a minute, George. Hmm? There's something I want to tell you. Now, darling, I'm sure it's not that serious. Yes, it is. I'm not seeing you anymore. <laughs> I'm not clowning, George. All right, dear, I give up. What's the joke? It's no joke. But you couldn't possibly mean that. Couldn't I? No. You're in love with me. Well, of all the conceited, egotistical males, what have you got that makes you think you're so special? I never claimed I was. No, but your attitude shows it. Sure, you may be hot stuff here in Greece, but I come from a big country, honey. Guys like you are a dime a dozen on every street corner. You don't mean that, Iris. You want to bet? But you told me. I never had it so good. You didn't believe me, did you? Yes, I did. Well, you poor sap. I guess your brother was right. My brother? Well, well, didn't you tell me that he, he said you needed a nursemaid? Has Nicholas been up to see you? No. You're lying. All right, so I am. Yeah. Yeah, he was up to see me. What did he say? Well, it wasn't what he said, sweetie. It was what he did. He gave me a check for 20,000 drachmas. You didn't take it. Now, baby, be reasonable. A girl's got to look out for herself. You can't mean that, Iris. For heaven's sake, what does it take to convince you? Maybe I should have made a tape recording of the dialogue. Get this and get it straight, Mr. Venizelos. You never meant a thing in my young life. You couldn't possibly. Iris. And stop irising me. I know my name. I've had it long enough. Now, will you, will you take me back to the hotel? Oh, 
Good evening, Mr. George. Good evening, Paul. Is my brother home? No, sir. He went out right after dinner. Have you any idea where I can find him? I'm afraid not, sir. Well, did he say anything about... Oh, uh, shall I... No, no, I'll answer it. Hello. Hello, is this Venizelos? Yes. This is Gunario. How are you, my friend? Who? Theodore is Gunario. Oh, well, you have the... I just see Comrade Iris. I understand everything is worked out fine. What did you say? What's the matter? You can't talk now? No, no, just a moment. Uh, Paul. Yes, Mr. George. Would you mind leaving me alone? Not at all, sir. Thank you. I'm sorry, Gunario. Uh, what were you saying? It's nothing important. I just called to congratulate you. I see now Moscow is right. Moscow? When they make you head of party in Greece instead of me. Head of the party? What's the matter, Nicholas? You don't seem for to understand me. It's, it's just that I've been asleep and I'm still rather groggy. Oh, I'm sorry. It's better I don't call, huh? Oh, I'd, I'd never forgive myself if I'd missed this. And now, if you'll excuse me, Gunario, I'll hang up. I've got one or two calls of my own I'd like to make. Hello? Have I the pleasure of speaking with Mr. Michael Waring? If that's your idea of pleasure, who is this? I'm afraid my name won't mean much to you. It's George Venizelos. George Venizelos? Yes, your embassy suggested I get in touch with you. Well, what can I do for you? I believe the shoe was on the other foot. I'd like to do something for you. You're aware that the Communist Party is outlawed in Greece? Yes. Well, suppose I told you that the number one man is right here in Athens. What would you say to that? Well, the first thing I'd say is, what's his name? I take it then you're interested. Interested is hardly the word. Well, I live at 14 Tricupes. Tricupes. That's the street right near the monument to Byron, isn't it? That's the one. Can I expect you at 10? You wouldn't want to make it earlier? Try to be patient, Mr. Wedding. After all, you chaps have been looking for this fellow for years. A few hours, more or less, shouldn't matter. I'll see you at 10. Mr. Wedding? That's right. In just a moment. Come in. I'm George Venizelos. I figured as much. Uh, may I take your coat? Don't bother. I don't think I'll be staying long. Cigarette? I'll stick to my own brand, if you don't mind. Thanks. Funny. You look nothing like I had imagined. Does anybody? Well, I only meant when I was in the States some years back, I heard a great deal about the Falcon. I rather fancied he'd be tall and lean. Maybe I'm not the Falcon, then. What? That's right. I'm not Mike Waring. Then who are you? Eddie Welch. Eddie Welch? Did Waring... Send me? Perish for bed. I'm here strictly on my own. Let this be a lesson to you, Georgie. Next time you make a phone call, make sure it don't go through a hotel switchboard. It's like a radio show. You never can tell who's listening. <laughs> on the highway, speed is the number one killer. It takes more than half of the lives lost in traffic accidents in many states. Last year, speeding drivers caused 15,000 deaths in the United States. That year, more than 500,000 persons were injured in automobile accidents blamed on excessive speed. That's the bloody price tag on too much speed, the cost that you may pay sooner or later for a few minutes saved by speeding. Slow down for safety's sake. And remember, drive as though your life depends on it. It does. <laughs> Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. Well, that's the way it goes sometimes, and apparently this wasn't Georgie's day. It may have started badly enough when Iris gave him the air, but Eddie Welsh sure ended it for him with a bang. But I knew none of this when I got out of the cab in front of 14 Tricoopus. I never even noticed the official-looking car parked at the curb. I guess I was asleep, but the boy who answered the door certainly opened my eyes. Yes, please? I'm looking for George Venizelos. On your name? Mike Waring. 
I'll be so good as to enter. Uh, maybe I'd better not. Pardon? Well, I learned a long time ago when I'm greeted by a man in a blue coat and brass buttons, the better I should have stood in bed. Uh, permit me to introduce myself. I am Emmanuel Kumundurif, lieutenant in His Majesty's police. Yeah, I was afraid of that. Well, where do we go? Right here. Uh oh. Is that George Venizelos? You did not know him? Only as a voice on the phone. Uh, may I? Allow me. Oh, Stratos. Yes, sir. Take three men and interview the neighbor. Yes, Lieutenant. All right. You, 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 come with me. Well, <clears throat> seen enough? Too much. Apparently, he knew what he was talking about. Pardon? He called me a couple of hours ago at my hotel. The American embassy had referred him to me. Why? Well, he claimed he knew the identity of the number one boy in the communist underground here. Oh, that's ridiculous. Well, someone was real anxious to shut him up. Did he have any family? Just a brother. What's his name? Nicholas Venizelos. Think I could talk to him? I do not imagine it would do any good. Still, you never know unless you try. I'll be seeing you, Lieutenant. I wish there was some way I could help Mr. Welling, but... I'm afraid there isn't much I can tell you. Well, you never know, Mr. Venizelos. Was your brother a communist? What? Well, he claimed he knew the identity of the head man in the party here. Oh, it must have been George's idea of a joke. Believe me, he took absolutely no interest in politics. And well, then what do you think was the motive for his murder? Robbery. According to the police, there wasn't a thing taken from his apartment. Mm, perhaps the burglar was frightened off. Well, that's a possibility. But let's look at another. How did you two get along? You know, I'd be within my rights to say it's none of your business. Mm -hmm. But somehow, I've got a great deal of confidence in you. Well, I appreciate that. George and I never got along too well. I suppose it was all my fault. I insisted on treating him as a child. And naturally, he resented it. Naturally. I never realized how much until recently. How did you find out? Through a mutual acquaintance. Iris Richards? Where did you learn about her? To Lieutenant Commandoris, you think she might know anything about his murder? Of course not. Still, I think we ought to have a talk. I'd rather you didn't, old man. You and your brother weren't rivals for her affections. Don't be ridiculous. And why do you object to my seeing her? Because there's nothing to be gained by it. Well, you never can tell. Nevertheless, I forbid you to see her. You, uh, forbid me? Yes. Well, you sound like you're used to giving orders. I am. What happens when they're not obeyed? That's a very good question, Waring. And if you insist on seeing Iris, you'll have the opportunity of finding the answer for yourself. I rather doubt whether you'll enjoy making the discovery. Yes? Hello, Miss Richards. Who are you? A fellow American. Oh, and you think this is old home week? Well, I had hopes. Sorry, I'm busy. The name is Waring, Mike Waring. Mm-hmm. I'm still busy. I'm a friend of George Venizelos. Oh. Mm-hmm. Well, if if George sent you over to plead his case, he's wasting his time. Mm-hmm. Well, isn't that Oh, why? yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, so may I come in? It won't do you any good. Won't do me any harm, either. Um, how how is George? Not so hot. He'll get over it. I kind of doubt that, Iris. You never get over his kind of trouble. He's a fool. He'll find a million other girls. Not George. Sure he will. He's just a kid. You sound like his brother Nicholas now. Well, that's what he is. Something tells me you were in love with the boy. Don't make me laugh. Why did you see so much of him? Well, a girl's got to have something to do in a place like this. Then he meant nothing to you? Not a single solitary thing. Well, then you won't be uh, interested in the fact that he was murdered. What? what? What did you say? Yeah, he was shot to death last night at a quarter to ten. You're lying. I'm sorry, Angel. Where is he? Where is he? I've got to see him. I thought he didn't mean anything to you. We, he didn't. You were crazy about him. No, no. Why did you give him up? Because I couldn't stand him. Why did you give him up, Iris? Did Nicholas have anything to do with it? How many times must I tell you he didn't mean a thing to me? Not a thing. Now will you get out of here and leave me alone? Just a moment. 
Ah, uh, Nicholas, my good friend. What are you doing here, Gennario? I just hear about your brothers making me for to be very unhappy. Come in. Thank you. I cannot tell you what is in my heart, Nicholas. I know how you feel about Georgi. Who do you think do such an awful thing? I wish I knew. Maybe that fellow Michael Waring find out, huh? Who told you about Waring? Oh, it's little. I don't know. It was up to see Iris. She tell him anything? Not Comrade Richards. She feel about party like you do. It's like I tell you on the phone yesterday. You told me on the phone? Well, sure, when I speak to you around 7, 8 o'clock. Where did you call me? Here. I wasn't even home at the time. It's impossible. The fellow I talked to of exactly the same accent. <gasps> Go on, Gennario. <laughs> I, I... I must... Have made a mistake. You certainly did. You spoke to George. What did you tell him? Well, nothing, Nicholas. I, I, I just ask how you feel. Uh, how is business? You're lying. You must have mentioned something about the party. No, Nicholas. You stupid blundering fool. <laughs> you should never do this to Gunario. Uh, I forgive you because you are upset. Get out. Sure, Nicholas. I know I have been a great disappointment to you, but maybe I can make up for it. You see if I don't gonna try. Yeah? Hello, Waring. Do I know you? Well, if you don't, it's not my fault. I'm Eddie Welch. Eddie Welch? Oh, sure. Yeah, would you like to come in? Try and keep me out. I assume that gun is loaded. Uh-huh. Then I wouldn't dare. It just flop anywhere. That sofa is pretty good. Thanks. And suppose you sit right here where I can keep an eye on you. Anything to oblige an old friend? So, you're Eddie Welch. Hmm? It register? Yeah, very definitely. You're a trigger man for the CP. What are you doing in Athens? I'm crazy about ruins. I thought you made your own. Yeah, it's pretty good. No, not very. Did you take care of George Venizelos? What do you think? I think, yes. What bothers me is who gave you your orders. Tell you what I'll do, Eddie. Make you a deal. You'll make me a deal? Well, occasionally you have to bargain with rats. Why, you no good. <gasps> What's the matter? Nothing. You're sick. Get back. I just want to help you. He said, get back. Or you oh, what? Let go. Oh, come on, drop it. Drop it. I'll break your arm. I mean it, Eddie. All right, now, who sent you around get, here? Get a doctor. Who sent you around, Eddie? Please, please, get me a doc. I'm on fire. Sure, you've been poisoned. The dirty louse. Who did it, Eddie? Come on, you want to get even, don't you? Oh, no good, dirty. Eddie. Eddie. Hello, operator. There's a dead body in my room. I'd like it removed. Maybe room service can help me out. Most of us are looking forward to the Labor Day weekend and planning to spend it out of town, and that's fine for most of us. But we should always keep in mind that these long weekend holidays are often tragic times for some of us who start out gaily to enjoy them. More than 1,300 American families will lose one or more of their loved ones in accidents on the highways. At all times, and particularly on long holiday weekends, drive as though your life depends on it. It does. Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. Well, I guess it only goes to prove you can't believe the ads. Here the Hotel Olympia boasted of their deluxe service, yet when Eddie Welsh keeled over in my room and I buzzed the operator for room service... It was 20 minutes before someone knocked on my door. And when I opened it, there stood Lieutenant Emmanuel Comandoris. Naturally, I was disappointed. Ah, Mr. Waring, we meet again. Oh, don't blame me, Lieutenant. The uh, gentleman is a friend of yours? Him? Heaven forbid. That's Eddie Welch. What was he doing here? Well, I've got an unpleasant idea. He came over to give me a treatment. A treatment? Mm Mm-hmm. The same kind he gave George Venizelos. You feel he was responsible for the murder? He practically admitted it to me. Why should he? Because he figured he had nothing to lose. He was going to put me away, too. And what happened? Well, he didn't watch his diet. He was poisoned. 
Ridiculous. Well, just turn them over and take a sniff. Need any help? No, I can't manage. Thank you. Uh, strychnine. That's what it is. I do not understand. Well, my guess is that the same party who ordered him to kill George Venizelos hated loose ends. So Eddie was sent around to take care of me. Then why was he poisoned? Because Eddie himself was a loose end. I guess his boss hoped that he would get to me before the strychnine took effect. Lucky for me, his timing was off. But why was George murdered? Well, I hate to use the phrase, Lieutenant, but it fits. It was all a communist plot. You know who was responsible? I've got a pretty good idea. But in fairness to all concerned, I feel his brother Nicholas should be the first to know. I hope he appreciates the honor. Hello, Nicholas. Miss Richards. It was Comrade Iris the last time we met. What are you doing here? I wanted to see you. That was most unwise. I thought the situation warranted it. Is Comrade Gunario here? Should he be? Mm-hmm. I took the liberty of telling him you wanted to see him. Sit down. Do you know what you're doing? Yeah. Isn't that a switch? I'm giving the orders now. It's funny what a little gun can do for your morale. You regret this, Comrade. I can assure you that the proper authorities oh, are going... Oh, please don't threaten me with party discipline. I've had all of that I can stand. For eight years, every minute of my time belonged to the party. For eight years, I did everything they told me without questioning. They were going to make a better world. Well, just between us girls, comrade, I haven't seen one soul they ever helped. But it took your brother's murder to open my eyes. The poor kid never... Oh, I guess that's comrade Gunario. Shall I? By all means. We couldn't possibly proceed without him. Just a moment. Hello, Nicholas. Mr. Waring. I think you know Lieutenant. Well, if it isn't Iris Richards. That's who it is. That wouldn't be a gun you're holding. Wouldn't it? Yeah, I guess it would. Better put it away, Angel. This man is a police lieutenant. I must warn you, you young lady. Don't that... bother. Just sit down over there. Hey, really, miss... Go I... on, all of you. Now, if you're going to behave like this, Iris, I'm not going to let you in on my surprise. What are you talking about? I know the motive for George's murder. What? Well, accidentally, George learned who was head of the local communist setup in Greece. I could have told you that. Yes, but you wouldn't. It's Brother Nick here, isn't it? Yes. Really, my dear, you're being most absurd. No one else could have made me give up, George. But uh, even grunting all this... You is... still would like to know who killed his brother? Yes. No, he did. Really, old man, I... Just stay where you are, Nicholas. Go on, Waring. Well, Nick here was completely dedicated to the party. It came first, last, and all the time. Naturally, when George threatened to end his use to the common form by exposing him... He had him killed. That's right. You certainly don't believe this, Lieutenant. I don't know about him, but I do. No, Iris. Venizelos. Venizelos. Well? He's dead. Anybody want to buy a second-hand Colt automatic? I'll let it go real cheap. I'll take it. Sold to the man on my right. All right, fellas, let's go. I think I took care of everything else. Ah, some more wine, Michael? I never could say no. You know, I am completely mystified. I don't see why, Lieutenant. Well, Nicholas and George were brothers. So were Cain and Abel. Oh, yes, but there was a difference here. Hmm? Nicholas was very fond of George. He did everything he possibly could for him. Oh, sure, but his first love was the Communist Party. And anything that threatened it was his enemy. So when it came to a showdown between his brother and the party, George didn't have a chance. I see. Well, I guess it proves one thing. Romancing a woman can sometimes lead to trouble, but having an affair with the Communist Party is just asking for murder. Good night, Lieutenant. <laughs> The Case of the Silent Butler. The Case of the Silent Butler. That's the title of next week's adventure of the Falcon when Mike Waring learns that a perfect servant around the house can still be a deadhead outdoors. The Adventures of the Falcon are based on the famous character created by Drexel Drake, produced and transcribed by Bernard L. Schubert, written by Eugene Wang, and directed by Richard Lewis. Les Damon was starred as the Falcon with Anne Burr as Iris. This program came from New York.
Fred Collins speaking. Falcon speaking. Oh, Margot. Uh, you'll have to cancel me out tonight, Angel. Army intelligence is flying me to Lisbon, Portugal. Yeah. Seems some little girl there is playing fast and loose with Uncle Sammy's secrets, and I gotta run her down if it kills me. Once again, the National Broadcasting Company brings you the transcribed adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. The Adventures of the Falcon, dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves the case of the silent butler. I guess the boy who first gave out with good things come in small packages. Must have had Maria Costa in mind. Maria is the luscious-looking brunette walking down one of the steep, winding alleys in Alfama, the old section of Lisbon. She's so pretty, even the beggars stop their panhandling to watch her go by. And 15 feet behind her is a man in a white suit and a white Panama hat who obviously feels she's worth more than a second glance. He must. He's been following her for days. All right, senor. What is the meaning of this? You talking to me, lady? Yes. What can I do for you? You can stop following me. Following you? I saw you at the Castello de San Giorgio. You mean that Moorish fortress up on the hill? Yes. Oh, not me, sugar. Well, I wouldn't make that climb for anything. I know it was you. And yesterday you were on the Rue Aurea. But if that's the section where the goldsmiths have their shops, you're mistaken. I aim to cover that tomorrow. You are lying. Not me, no man. You ask anybody. They'll tell you Dixie Harris ain't told a lie since he was knee-high to a grasshopper. No, ma'am, it must have been some other tourist in a white suit. Well, in the future, you will be so good as to leave me alone. Why, sure, Maria, anything you say. How did you know my name is Maria? Did I call you that? Yes. Well, now, what do you know? I guess there must be something in that mental telepathy business after all. I demand to know why you are following me. Well, I told you, honey, I'm just doing a little sightseeing. And you're the prettiest sight I've seen in all of Portugal. And you can't blame a fella if he comes back for a second look. I'll be seeing you, sugar. Can I help the senorita? Oh, please. My name is Maria Costa. Oh, yes. Senor Butler is suspecting you. Just follow me. Has he been waiting long? Oh, perhaps a half hour. Maria. Oh, hello, Stephen. I was beginning to worry. Oh, oh, thank you, darling. Would the senor care to order now? Yes, I think so. What would you like, Maria? Oh, a double Smirnoff and orange juice. Double? <laughs> I've developed a great fondness for vodka. All right, Jose, I'll have the same. Oh, very good, senor. Oh, Stephen, it is so good to see you. I, mm. I cannot tell you how glad I am. Ever since you called this morning, I felt like a bird. All right, Maria, what's up? What's up? Why are you so nervous? Has my wife been bothering you again? Oh, no, Stephen, honest. Then what happened? Nothing, sweetheart. Now, don't tell me that. You're trembling all over. What happened? Oh, I do not wish to worry you, Stephen. You, you have enough trouble at home with Anne. Come on, Maria, I want to know. Well, well, some man has been following me. What? Ever since Thursday, I, I think his name is... Dixie Harris. Dixie Harris? Was he an American? Yes. What does he look like? Well, perhaps as tall as you, but much heavier. Was he wearing a white suit and a white Panama hat? You know him? I saw him in Black Horse Square on Monday and in Alcantara on the day... Yes, I have your order. Well, thank you. Will there be anything else? Not just now. Yes, of course, senor. What does it mean, Stephen? Hmm? Why is this man following us? I don't know, honey, but I sure intend to find out. I'll drink up and I'll get with it. Four, two, two, one. Hello? 
Have I the honor of talking to that distinguished gentleman known far and wide as the Falcon? How are you, Dixie? How in the world did you know it was me? I recognize you by a white suit. How we doing? Well, not so hot, Mike. Maria spotted me. When? This morning in Alfama. Tough. I'm sorry, pal, but it couldn't be helped. Though I managed to tailor to the Cafe Europa where she heisted a couple with Steve Butler. Always Steve Butler, isn't it? Uh-huh. You learn anything else? No, not a single blessed thing. If you ask me, friend, we got a bum steer. That gal's no spy. And what about those confidential reports from the embassy we found in her apartment? I'm beginning to think they were planted. By whom? By the same little lady who gave us the original tip. Are you able to latch onto her again? Nope. That name she used was a phony. Well, I don't get it. Me neither. But a lay you 6 2 and even somebody's trying to frame Maria. What gets me is why. Yeah, that's a very good question, Dixie. I'll get busy on the answer right away. Keep in touch, fella. I may have news for you real soon. Yes. You, Stephen Butler? That's right. My name is Mike Waring. Oh, of course. Army intelligence informed us you'd be dropping by. You probably want to see the ambassador. Oh, there's no need to bother him. You're his aide, aren't you? Yes. Well, I think you can give me all the information I need. Sit down, won't you? Thanks. Cigarette? Uh, yeah, please. You uh, see much of Maria Costa these days? What? Maria Costa, the uh, girl who works in the coding department. Well... Working together in the embassy, naturally, I run into her every once in a while. Yeah, naturally, but uh, how about on the outside? Why should I? No good reason. Uh, suppose I told you she was a spy. That's ridiculous. We found confidential material in her apartment. I don't believe it. Well, that's your privilege. She ever try to pump you? Of course not. You're a married man, aren't you, Butler? Oh, what's that got to do with it? Uh, nothing, nothing. Uh, what does your wife look like? Why? I'm just curious. We got our tip about Maria from a tall, statuesque blonde. A blonde? Yeah, blue eyes, fair complexion. Little birthmark on the right cheek. You know her? No. You sure? Are you calling me a liar? Oh, heaven forbid. I was just wondering why she would try to frame Miss Costa. I have no idea. Yeah, well, if through some accident you find out, give me a jingle, huh? I'm staying at the Prince George. I'll bear that in mind, Waring, but I can't make you any promises. If I learn anything, you can trust me to do the right thing. You startled me. I didn't think you'd be home. Yeah, it, it is kind of early for me. Oh, I've got to get off my feet. I had the most miserable day. Oh. I had a pretty lousy one myself. A fellow named Mike Waring dropped in to see me. Who? Mike Waring. He's with Army Intelligence. It seems they got a tip that Maria Costa was a spy. Really? Really. According to Waring, his informant was, uh, how did he put it? Oh, yes. A tall, statuesque blonde with a birthmark on her right cheek. <laughs> Darling, you're not suggesting yes, that... Yes, I am. You're being absurd. Why should I? Because you're out of your mind. All right, Mr. Butler, I did it. Sure, I sicked army intelligence on your precious Maria. Why don't you ask me why? I don't have to. No? Do you think I was blind? I know you're in love with her. You know, it's a funny thing, Anne. I bet I've heard you say that a thousand times in the last seven years, and for once in your life, you're right. No. Yes, this time you've hit the nail right on the head. Steve, you don't mean that. You couldn't. You're just trying to hurt me. I don't have to. You're the kind who hurts yourself. Steve, please, listen to me. I know I was wrong, but I love you so much, darling. Every time you look at a woman, I go crazy. I know. You've got to understand, I just do these awful things because I'm so afraid of losing you. Well, you have, not. No. You love me. You know you do. It's all over, Ann. I'm going to marry Marie. No. I couldn't live without you. You better get used to the idea. I'm moving out now. I won't let you go. Stop it. I'll kill her. So help me, if you move out of here, I'll kill her. You're insane. Stephen, don't go. I promise you, darling. I'll send for my things in the morning. Steve, please. Continental Hotel, your order, please. Uh, this is Louise Butler in 419. Yes, Senora. Uh, what's the house detective's name? The house detective, Louise Machado. 
Oh, Are yeah. you having difficulty, Senora? Uh, no, no, I, uh, I just would like to see Senor Machado. Is he around? Well, not just now, Senora. Well, uh, at the moment he comes in, will you please send him up to my room? It's very important. You might even say it's a matter of life and death. <laughs> Senora Bartler? Yeah? I am Luis Machado. Oh, yeah. Come on in. Obrigado. Uh, suppose we uh, sit right here, huh? Oh, the telephone operator said... I, I, uh, got... I know, but uh, wouldn't you care for something to drink first? Oh, senor. I, I am on duty. The management expects <laughs> me to do... What the management doesn't know won't hurt them, will it? <laughs> Let's see how true. There we are. The senor is most kind. If there is any way I can reciprocate... There is. You have but to command Luis Machado. How would you like to make yourself $500? American. <laughs> I would like you very much. You must know all sorts of dangerous criminals. Oh, unfortunately, yes. It is unavoidable in my calling. You know a professional killer? Hmm? A man who would commit murder for a price. Senor, a butler. I'll pay him $5,000. You are jesting, no? $5,000 cash and 500 for you. I got the money right here in my purse. <laughs> It pleases the senora to make fun of Luis Machado, huh? You don't believe me? Oh, naturally not. If, if I did, it would be my sacred duty to inform the police. <laughs> You're right, senor. I was just pulling your leg. It was just a bad joke. <laughs> <laughs> I am relieved <laughs> for a moment. You I... thought I really meant it, huh? Uh, yes. Now, what would I want with a hired killer? After all, if you want a job done right, there's nothing like doing it yourself, huh? I do not understand. <laughs> it's not important. Uh, senor, I hate to rush you, but uh, would you mind finishing your drink? Huh? I just remembered I got something to do. We've been asked to pass a warning along to you, but it really shouldn't be necessary. Almost every issue of your daily newspaper gives you this warning over and over. It's the warning to drive carefully and safely. Just read the stories that tell of death and accidents on the highway, and then think about it for a minute. Those warnings right from the news are more dramatic warnings of danger than any that we could make up. They can and may happen to you. You can't keep everyone else from driving recklessly, but you can check on yourself. Highways are extra crowded now, so be extra careful. The life you save may be your own. Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. Well, there's one nice thing you can say about being married to a girl like Ann Butler makes life kind of interesting. You never know what she's going to cook up next. And while Mrs. Butler was comparing recipes with Louise Machado, the obliging hotel detective, Dixie Harris and I were cruising on the Avenida de Libertad, past the obelisk which commemorates the liberation of Portugal from Spanish rule. But Dixie never even noticed it. Apparently, he thought I was a more interesting sight. What's eating you, Mike? You look unhappy. Yeah, that's me. Old transparent face wearing. You worrying about that Maria cost? Uh-huh. Ain't you convinced yet she was framed? She's no spy. Well, that's what bothers me, Dixie. I don't get you. Watch it. You almost got that pedestrian. Shucks. And I thought I had him for sure. <laughs> well, what'd you make of Steve Butler? Strictly the lanolin plus type. A real smoothie. Uh -huh, that's why I had him pegged, too. But I figure he's real gone on Maria. Yeah, which forces us to the unhappy conclusion that the frame for Maria was staged by his wife. Hey, you think that's who our blonde tipster was? But deaf. <laughs> Well, wait till she finds out a little stunt fell flat on its face. She's going to be real annoyed. And a gal like Ann Butler believes in the old saw, if you don't succeed at first, try, try again. What do you think she'll try next? No telling. Yeah, I guess you're right. 
<laughs> Douglas, I once knew a doll like that back in Atlanta. She was real crazy about a friend of mine and real jealous, too. <laughs> Man, every time she blew her cork, you'd have to make for the hills, because that gal was murder. <laughs> she was what? She was murder. Yeah, that's what I thought you said. <laughs> Where does Maria Costa live? Right off the road to Prince Pitt. Well, turn this heap around. Let's go. Hey, you don't think Miss Butler... I think she's exactly the same type as that girl you knew in Atlanta. Step on it, boy. We've got to make like the Marines. See, si, senores. Oh, no. Let's get out of here, Mike. Just a moment, please. You are looking for someone? Uh, yeah, but I don't think we'll find her in. Is this Maria Costa's apartment? Eight days. Uh-huh. That's what I was afraid of. Excuse me. Oh, don't mind him, Lieutenant. He always acts like this when he sees a man in the blue uniform. He's from the South. He keeps forgetting the Civil War is over. That is most amusing. May I inquire as to your names? Uh, sure, I'm Mike Waring, and this is Dixie Harris. We're attached to American intelligence. I see. Be so good as to enter. Now, where is she? In the bedroom. Dead? She was shot twice. Tough. Obviously, this does not come as a surprise to you, senor. Hardly. I would be most interested to hear why. Can we see her first? Of course. Over here, senores. Uh, can we take a peek? You would like me to remove the blanket? Yes, please. Holy smoke, that ain't Maria Costa. No. You are surprised? That's the understatement of the week. You do not know this lady? Well, judging from the blonde hair and that birthmark on her right cheek, I'd say she was Ann Butler. You are absolutely correct. Where is Maria Costa? Senorita Costa has momentarily disappeared. But it is of no import. We have already apprehended the assassin. Who is it? The victim's husband. Steve Butler? I don't believe it. He has even obliged us with a confession. Where is he? In the Palace of Justice. Can I see him? It will be my pleasure. This way, senor. Who's there? Hello, Steve. Waring. That's who it is. The embassy sent you over? No, I'm here strictly on my own. Why? Oh, I don't know. Maybe it's because you're a fellow American in the jam, or maybe I'm just plain nosy. Cigarette? Thanks. Well, how are they treating you? I can't complain. They tell me you signed a confession. Mm-hmm. Why did you kill him? The usual reason. We didn't get along. Well, from what I hear, you haven't been getting along for years. Now, when she tried to frame Maria Costa for espionage, that was the straw that broke the camel's back. So you picked up a gun and shot her, hmm? Twice. Well, makes sense. Thanks. But uh, why did you pick Maria's apartment to do the job? Well, it seemed like the best spot. Well, didn't it occur to you it might be embarrassing for Maria? I guess I wasn't thinking too clearly. It's funny. You impress me as a boy who always knows what he's doing. Where's Maria now? I, uh... I have no idea. You wouldn't have made that confession to shield her. To shield her? <laughs> Don't tell me I impress you as the noble type. Now, strangely enough, you do. <laughs> You're out of your mind. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll find out when we latch on to Miss Costa. Look, Waring, you mind your own business. Well, <laughs> this is my business. You're an employee of the American Embassy. So is Maria. I don't want you bothering her. You understand? She had nothing to do with this. You're in love with her. I was not in love with her. It was just a little extracurricular activity. Uh -huh. I killed Anne, and that's all there is to it. Well, you ought to know best. But I like to keep an open mind. I'll be seeing you, Steve. <laughs> Can I assist you, senor? Uh, you can if you're the house detective. I am, senor. But how did you know? You're wearing a derby. Uh, my name is Michael Waring. Me wear Waring? No, that's close enough. And I am Luis Machado. Well, glad to know you, Luis. Uh, suppose you take a look at this. You are with the American intelligence. Uh-huh. And there is some way I can be of aid? Yes, I think so. Oh, command me, senor. 
You uh, heard about the Senora Ann Butler? Oh, yes. It is most sad. She and her husband were guests of the establishment. Yes, I know. The switchboard operator tells me a couple of hours before she was murdered, she asked that you come up to her room. Oh, yes. It was most puzzling. Oh? What did she want? Well, knowing of my profession, she wished to know if I was acquainted with someone who might commit a murder. How much was she willing to pay? Huh? Well, naturally, she didn't expect him to work for free. Oh, no, no. She said she would compensate him in the amount of $5,000 American. Hmm. Understandably, I was horrified. Then she explained it was all a joke. Did you believe her? She was an American. <laughs> yeah, they'll do anything for a laugh. Well, what happened after that? Well, as I took my departure, she said something... Uh, let me see if I can remember... Uh, if you wish a task well done... Do it yourself. Exactly. Well, that explains how she wound up at Maria Costa's apartment. She went there to kill her. Oh, it does not seem credible. Well, take my word for it. That's how it happened. All right, thanks a lot, Louise. Uh, I have been of some aid. Oh, indeed you have. Maybe I can make it up to you real soon. What's a good word, Pappy? Look, I'm at the Continental. I just got through at the hotel deck. Uh, was there any help? Not much. How did you make out? I didn't. Did you find out who identified Ann Butler for the police? Oh, they didn't need anybody. They found a purse right next to the body. Was there a gun in it? No. Everything else but. Passport, driver's license, $12 and change, and her keys to the hotel. What about Maria Costa? Oh, she wasn't in there either. <laughs> I mean, have you been able to locate her? Uh-uh, not yet. Well, now, look, we've got to find her, Dixie. Go through her application at the embassy. She must have given the name of her close relatives. Maybe she's holed up with one of them. Oh, I'll, I'll get right on it. Good boy. I'm going back to my hotel. If you learn anything, lift the phone. Come in, Senor Wary. Huh? You will be so good as to close the door. Oh, yes, of course. Well, you know, you can't beat these Portuguese hotels. If I knew my room came equipped with something like you... You will stop right there. Say, isn't that an awfully big gun for a little girl? I can manage. Please sit down. Oh, never, while a lady is standing. Oh, I insist. I just wanted to show you I never forget my manners. You're Maria Costa, aren't you? Yes. Well, you've been giving us a lot of trouble, Maria. And we've been looking all over Lisbon for you. Obviously, you did not look in the right place. Obviously. You know Steve Butler confessed to his wife's murder? Mm -hmm. That does not surprise me. But we both know he didn't do it, don't we? Then who did? You. Your showing up here with a gun proves it. <laughs> you are absolutely correct. Well, I always say if two people share a secret, it uh, ain't no secret. Is that what you always say? Mm hmm Well, I think the problem is easily resolved. If I should kill you, that would leave only one. Hey, now, wait a minute. If there is a fallacy in my logic, senor, I will be happy for you to point it out. <laughs> I'll give you exactly one minute to try. Summer is the time for carefree holidays and vacations. But don't be carefree on the highway. With roads jammed with traffic, this is the time to be extra careful when driving. When you plan a trip, be sure to allow plenty of time so that you won't be forced to drive too fast or too long. When you get tired at the wheel, you lose your skill and your judgment. You can drive better when your mind is at ease and when you know that your car is in good running order. And when you start that trip, resolve that you're going to obey traffic laws and regulations. Don't gamble with safety. Remember... The life you save may be your own. And now back to the adventures of the Falcon. I don't know if you've ever been alone in a hotel room with a beautiful girl, but take my word for it, it's overrated. Especially if she's chaperoned by a gun. 
Still, I was awfully pleased that Maria gave me a full minute to dig up a reason why she shouldn't use it. In this day and age, most girls wouldn't have been that patient. Well, senor, have you any final request? Yeah, I'd like to see Brooklyn again. Look, Maria, killing me won't solve anything. I believe it will. It doesn't bother you they'll hang Steve Butler for his wife's murder? And... Not at all. You were in love with him. You're being very childish. You know he confessed to Anne's murder just to shield you. And you feel I should do as much in return? It's what I would have expected. Yes, yeah, seems to me... It seems to me, senor, you have exhausted your allotted time. So if you will forgive me... Oh, no. What happened, Angel? A gun to fire? Let me go! Oh, don't be silly. No, you don't. We only allow one chance to a customer. Come on, drop it. Oh. All right, now sit over there while I fall. Ask come in. You behave yourself. This is your wearing. Ah, oh, if it isn't Louise Machado. Yeah, come on in, Louise. My uh, visit is not inopportune. No, as a matter of fact, your timing couldn't have been better. Oh, but the lady... Uh, naturally, as a hotel detective, you'd think of that. Uh, this is Maria Costa. Maria Costa? Yeah, she just tried to kill me. I will succeed yet. I wouldn't make book on it, Angel. Certainly not with this gun. The firing pin is gone. What? Am I right, Louise? Uh, let me see. Oh, but yes, someone has filed it off. It would require a miracle for her to harm you with this. Mm -hmm. Well, strictly between us, I don't think she was really trying. You're insane. Really, senor. Don't you get it, Louise? She's in love with Steve Butler. So? So he confessed to shield her. Now, if she had just walked in here and did the same, what would have been my reaction? Well, senor, you would have thought that she was trying to protect him. That's right. I would have patted her shoulder and told her to go home like a good girl. So she decided to incriminate herself, and taking a shot at me seemed like the best way to handle it. No, no! Yes, yes. And being the type girl you are, you wouldn't want to see me hurt, so you filed off the firing pin, hoping it would go unnoticed in the excitement. I tell you, you are wrong! Just relax, Angel. Hey, I, I do not understand. If she did not kill the senor or butler, who did? Well, I'm glad you asked me that, Machado, because I just happened to be prepared with an answer. Now, who knew that Ann Butler had $5,000 on her to pay a gunman? Who alone had the opportunity to follow her over to Maria's apartment and kill her there for the bundle? Who? You. Oh, really, Senor? Now, now, don't be unhappy, Luis. You couldn't use that money anyway. It's not inflammable. Where you're going, you'll need money to burn. <laughs> Dixie, looks like my plane's all warmed up. Madrid, I'm on my way. Now hold it, Pappy. Oh, you don't want me to miss it. <laughs> You're not leaving Lisbon until you answer one question. I can see how you figured Maria didn't kill Anne. But what made you so sure Steve Butler didn't do it? Well, that wouldn't have been ethical. Ethical? Yeah. <laughs> or it may happen in detective stories and uh, radio programs. But don't you know in real life, the butler never does it. Ooh. So long, Dixie. The Case of the Careless Corpse. The Case of the Careless Corpse. That's the title of next week's Adventure of the Falcon. When Mike Waring learns that what some people do for money is nothing short of murder. The Adventures of the Falcon are based on the famous character created by Drexel Drake. Produced and transcribed by Bernard L. Schubert, written by Eugene Wang, and directed by Richard Lewis. Les Damon was starred as the Falcon with Bryna Rayburn as Maria. This program came to you from New York. Fred Collins speaking.
Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Virginia. I'm glad you called. Now you'll have to cancel me out tonight, Angel. Army intelligence is flying me to Berlin. Yeah, it seems some boy there set up a murder that's as pretty as a picture, and they figure I'll look good in the frame. The Adventures of the Falcon, dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves The Case of the Careless Corpse. There's one nice thing you can say about working for Army Intelligence. You certainly get around. How else would a guy like me get to see such wonderful places like Berlin and meet such interesting people like Maxel Oppenheimer? And just in case you're curious, Maxel is a cute-looking character in the tight-fitting green suit and the gray gloves surveying the crowd at the Europa, a sidewalk cafe near the Willemstrasse. To look at him, you'd think he didn't have a care in the world, and you'd be right. Maxel lets the next man do the worrying. Why, Herr Christopher, imagine finding you here. You're late, Maxel. I could not help myself. I received your message at five o'clock. You're lying. Schnabel told me he spoke to you at noon. I never can hide things from you, can I, Christopher? Sit down. Okay. Schnabel tell you about your assignment? He started to, but I prefer to get my instructions firsthand. This way, there's no chance of a misunderstanding. An American intelligence officer named Michael Waring arrives from Madrid this evening. He has an appointment tomorrow morning with Professor Heinrich Schiller. The expert on rockets? Yes. Would be in the best interests of the Communist Party if that appointment were never kept. I think it can be arranged. Where does the Herr Professor live? At 14 Leopoldstrasse with his wife, Margot. Margot? She's an American. What an amazing coincidence. Here, Professor Schiller, a German, is married to an American. And you, an American, are married to a German. Suppose we leave my personal life out of this. Yes, of course. You are to introduce yourself to Schiller as an agent of American intelligence. You'll find all the necessary credentials in this wallet. Tell him Waring sent you around to pick him up. Where would you like to have him delivered? To the bakery in Leipzigstrasse. I'll try to make arrangements to smuggle him into East Berlin on Wednesday. I'll be only too happy to look after him till then. I don't want him hurt, Maxwell. Why, Christopher, it never once entered my mind. I mean it. Professor Schiller can be very useful to the party. I wouldn't touch a hair on his head. Unless, of course, it was absolutely necessary. I'm warning you, Maxwell. I only meant I would resort to violence purely as a last resort. You know, I'm always ready to sacrifice my desires for the party. I hope the Herr Professor will be as cooperative. Yes? Excuse me, but I would like very much to see Herr Professor Heinrich Schiller. Well, of course. I'm Frau Schiller. Won't you come in? Uh, Danke. You're very kind. Uh, Whom shall I say is calling? Uh, Permit me. Maxel Oppenheimer. United States Army Intelligence. What do you want with my husband? Naturally, we are very interested in his experiments with rockets. Naturally. But when he was in a concentration camp, who cared? You say that with a great deal of bitterness. Why can't you leave us alone? Everybody wants to use him. First the Nazis... Now you people and the communists. Oh, Sheila. Hasn't he suffered enough? Why don't you stop bothering him? I'm sure the Herr Professor does not feel this way. If I could have a word with him... He is not home. That's very strange. I spoke to him on the telephone, not more than... Margot. Yes? Ah, is there someone to see me? No. Ah, Herr Professor Schiller, I believe. Yes? I'm Maxwell Oppenheimer. Your lovely wife told me you were out. Why, Margot? Because they're all the same. They're all trying to use you. They just want to pick your brains and... Oh, please, Liebson, what will our guest think? I don't care what he thinks. I must apologize for my wife, Herr Oppenheimer, but ever since I was released from Dachau, she's most concerned for me. It's very understandable. Well, Herr Waring is waiting for us. Shall we go? Of course. No. No, I won't let you. 
You're going to stay out of this, Heinrich. This is none of your concern. Now, Liebchen, you are upsetting yourself. I warn you, if you go with him, don't expect to find me here when you come back. Oh, you're talking like a child. I mean it. You'll never see me again. Never. All right, Herr Oppenheimer. If you are ready. By all means. Auf Wiedersehen, Liebchen. Heinrich! Oh, Heinrich, Heinrich. <laughs> I believe this is the one. Yes. Uh, if you'll wait till I turn on the lights. Ah, there we are. Be so good as to enter. Thank you. I know it isn't much, but please try to make yourself comfortable. I... I find this very strange, Herr Oppenheimer. You don't like my room, Professor? Well, it, it is hardly what I expected. You mean the bakery in front? Yes. We think it's very dramatic. Who would ever suspect such a proletarian establishment would Where hide... is Herr Waring? Herr Waring? The gentleman I was supposed to meet. Oh, yes. He'll be here in a few minutes. In the meantime, perhaps a little schnapps? No, thank you. Herr Oppenheimer... My friends call me Maxwell. May I see your credentials? Isn't this rather late? May I see them, please? Suppose they do not meet with your approval. That would complicate matters. If Herr Waring arrives, you just tell Herr him... Professor, you are not thinking of leaving. Yes. If I've offended you in any way... Will you be good enough to open this door? I wish you didn't feel like this, because you leave me no choice. Put away that gun. Doesn't it frighten you? No. Not even a little bit? Are you going to open this door? You know, Professor, I admire men of spirit. They offer a challenge I can never resist. Oh, oh. never. Oh. How do you feel, Professor? Oh. oh. I'm so sorry. I guess it proves there must be something to feminine intuition. Remember your wife said if you left with me, you'd never see her again. Well, she was absolutely right. Oh, oh, oh. Second. Oh, hello. Um, I I'm looking for Mike Waring. Well, you picked the best possible place. Come in. Thank you. Is, is he angry with me? Is who angry with you? My husband. He should have known I never meant what I said. Uh, do you mind if we take this from the top of the page? I'm a little confused. Oh, I'm sorry. I should have introduced myself. I'm Margot Schiller. Margot Schiller? Wait a minute. You're not Professor Heinrich Schiller's wife? Yes. Well, what do you know? Sit down. Oh, thank you. I knew he was married, but I assumed it was to a German. Well, didn't your assistant tell you? My assistant? The little man you sent to pick up Heinrich, the one in the green suit. When was this? You did send someone. Now, look, Mrs. Schiller... Well, didn't you? No, I just got into Berlin an hour ago. But he used your name. There must have been a leak. You're lying. You've hidden him somewhere. You no know better. Well, then what happened to him? He was supposed to meet you. Not till tomorrow. He was kidnapped. Yes, I'm afraid so. Now, this man who came for They'll him... They'll kill him. No, they won't. They wouldn't dare. Why? Are you going to stop them? Oh, why couldn't you leave us alone? Now, look, Mrs. Schiller, I know you're upset. Let me take you home. No. Please. And I promise you, we'll get your husband back. You promise me. Now, I know how you feel, but give us a chance anyway. Now, let me drive you home. I'll get to work on it right away. Is it? Maxwell. Just a moment. Hello, Christopher. Where is he? Huh? Professor Schiller. Oh, in the bedroom. Is he all right? But of course. We spent a very enjoyable evening. We've got to get him into the Soviet zone immediately. I thought you said we'd move him Wednesday. We can't wait. 
American intelligence has ordered the house to help. What's the matter with him? Nothing. He's covered with blood. Oh, I can explain that, Christopher. He he had a little accident. He what? He tripped over that table. It, it was very dark. Schiller. Schiller. I think he's asleep. You stupid, blundering fool. He's dead. You must be mistaken, Christopher. Herr Professor. You killed him. No, no, I give you my word. I, I... told you not to touch him. Shouldn't have done that, Christopher. But I forgive you. You forgive me? What do you think Moscow will say about this? You wouldn't report me. Wouldn't I? Please, Christopher. I know I've been a terrible disappointment to you, but if you give me another chance, I may surprise you yet. Like they say in Time magazine, death came for her, Professor Schiller, at the ripe old age of 42. But the first I knew of it was some six hours later when I received a call from the West Berlin police. They had fished a body out of the spree and they thought I might be interested. I was. Then I remembered the promise I made to Margot Schiller. And I thought if I couldn't return her husband sound of wind and limb, the least I could do was show myself. I figured to be a mighty poor substitute. Oh, Mr. Waring. May I come in? Did you find him? Yes. Well, where is he? You said the minute you did, you'd bring him home. I know. Well, then why... He isn't dead. Yes, he is. I knew it. I knew it had to end this way. Oh, why couldn't you leave us alone? You don't understand. I understand that my husband's dead. Isn't that enough? And you feel we're responsible? Yes, I do. He was a scientist. You had no right to involve him in cheap politics. This isn't cheap politics, Mrs. Schiller. We're fighting people to whom decency means nothing. Your husband's murder proves that. He was killed by common form agents. Well, I promise you... You promised me that you'd bring him back safe and sound. I know, but he was dead when I said that. Now, this man who claimed to be my assistant, what name did he use? I don't remember. Well, what did he look like? I can't remember that either. I don't think you're trying. You're absolutely right. Don't you want to see your husband's murder avenged? It will be, Mr. Waring. But I intend to take care of it myself. And now, if you'll forgive me, I think I would like to be alone for a while. Yes? I would like very much to speak with Frau Margot Schiller, please. Uh, this is she. Forgive me for disturbing you at a time like this, Frau Schiller, but I have just read of the unfortunate death of your husband. Permit me to extend my condolences. But who is this? You do not know me, but I feel I can be of some service. Would you be interested in knowing the man responsible for the Herr Professor's murder? What? Please do not think me a crank. I'm really well informed. Your husband was kidnapped by a little man named Maxel Oppenheimer. How do you know that? Are you convinced I am not a crank? Yes. Well, the murder was ordered by an American named Vincent Christopher. Vincent Christopher? Yes. And from what I have heard of your affection for your husband, I am sure you will put this information to excellent use. Good hunting, Frau Schiller. <laughs> Operator. Operator. Your order, please. I gave my order 20 minutes ago. This is Mr. Christopher, Suite 4A. I asked you to get me Grenadier 413. I wish to speak to Maxel Oppenheimer. I'm sorry, Mr. Christopher, but that number does not answer. That's impossible. Try it again. Shall I ring you back? No, I'll hang on. Is that you, Gabrielle? Where have you been? I told you... I... I told you. Herr Christopher, is there something wrong? Herr Christopher! Hello? 
Diplomacy, Schiller. You know, this is getting to be ridiculous, Mr. Waring. Well, I'm sorry, but it can't be helped. Can you spare me a couple of minutes? What's the point? I've already told you everything I know. Well, maybe this time I can tell you something. All right, come in. Sit down. Thank you. Did you ever hear of a man named Vincent Christopher? Should I? I hope not. He was shot to death an hour ago at the Kaiser Wilhelm. In going through his room, the police found these papers. Would you care to look at them? Not particularly. Well, they definitely established that Christopher was the number one man in the communist apparatus in West Berlin. So? So there's no doubt he was responsible for your husband's kidnapping, if not his death. I see your point. And now with Mr. Christopher's murder, I become the most obvious suspect. Yes. But this all assumes that I knew who Christopher was. Someone might have tipped you off. Who, for example? That's what I intend to find out. Well, I wish you luck. But there's one thing that puzzles me. Just what side are you on? According to you, Christopher was a communist. That doesn't justify his murder. That's one of the differences between the Reds and ourselves. So you intend to find his killer? Yes, I do. Well, far be it for me to keep you from your self-appointed task. Good day, Mr. Waring. I hope never to hear from you again. Who is it? Who is it? Hello, Gabrielle. What are you doing here, Maxwell? I just heard about poor Christopher. Naturally, I came immediately. That was very foolish. He was my friend. I wouldn't feel right if I failed to pay my respects to his widow. I'm sure he would have been happy to do as much for me. Would you happen to have a cigarette? You'll find some in that container. Ah, Christopher's favorite brand. He was so fond of them. You had better leave, Maxwell. The police were here all afternoon. They may return. But I have nothing to hide. I wonder if you can say as much. Huh? I have a feeling you are not overly fond of your husband. You are insane. Oh, please don't misunderstand me, Gabrielle. I don't blame you in the least. Vincent was very difficult. I remember one night at the theater when he struck you for forgetting the tickets. My heart went out to you. Don't question. It's true. I'm very fond of you, Gabrielle. I feel I owe you a great deal. You might just as easily have told Frau Schiller I was responsible for her husband's death. What are you talking about? A very dear friend of mine operates the switchboard in the hotel here. <laughs> I'm afraid she was guilty of eavesdropping. Yes, she uh, she heard you telephone Frau Schiller. If that's all you have to say. Oh, no, I have lots more. Well, I'm not interested in hearing it. I wish you wouldn't take that attitude, Gabrielle. We should be kind to one another. As Christopher's widow, you have so much, and I have so little. Are you attempting to blackmail me? It isn't as though I wanted a great deal. 50,000 marks would suit me fine. Get out. I think I'm being very reasonable. I said get out. I... You know, it's a funny thing, but your husband did that to me. Then the poor fellow was killed. I do hope you will have better luck. Auf Wiedersehen, Liebchen. Intelligence, Major Thornhill speaking. Would it be possible for me to talk with Herr Michael Waring? Well, I don't see why not. Hey, Mike. Yeah? For you. Who is it? He didn't say. Hello? Herr Waring? That's right. Who's this? I don't believe my name would mean anything to you. Now try me. I would rather not. You wouldn't be Maxel Oppenheimer. Maxel Oppenheimer? I never heard of the gentleman. You don't know what you're missing. I've just been going through Vincent Christopher's diary. Oh? Yes, he thought very highly of your talents. He liked me. I bet everybody does. Did you kill him? Of course not. According to Christopher, you did. Oh, he was mistaken. Yes, I'll bet. Let me, Jim. Yeah? I've got Comrade Maxwell on the wire. Try to run it down. Will do. You're wearing? Yeah. 
I hope you're not being so childish as to attempt to trace this call. No, never once entered my mind. There's a call on extension. All right, what can I do for you, Maxwell? Nothing, but uh, I would like to do something for you. Why? It's my nature. Would you be interested in the name of the party who informed Margot Schiller that Christopher was responsible for her husband's death? Definitely. It was Christopher's wife, Gabrielle. You're crazy. Why should she do that? Can you think of a better way to get rid of an unwanted husband? You might have a point there. If I've been of any service, I'm delighted. Hello, Maxwell. Maxwell! Did he hang up? Yeah. Were you able to run it down? No. That's tough. Well, if anyone else calls, tell them I've gone over to see Frau Christopher. I hate to stick my neck out, but I'll lay you six to five. This is in the bag. Yes. Frau Christopher? That is correct. Glad to know you. I'm Mike Waring. Mike Waring? Yes, I'm investigating your husband's murder for the American authorities. Oh, won't you come in? Thank you. Please make yourself comfortable. I don't mind if I do. Can I offer you a drink? Well, being Irish, I'll take some Jameson's if you have it. I have it. Uh, You feel up to answering a few questions? Of course. Thanks. Uh, Were you aware of Herr Christopher's political activities? Political activities? Mm -hmm. He was a writer. Well, that was just a blind. Actually, he was head man in the communist cell in West Berlin. Seems incredible. He didn't confide much in you, did he? No. Tell me something, Herr Waring. If Vincent was, as you say, a communist... He was. Then he was your enemy. Why are you so determined to solve his murder? Well, I know it sounds ironic, but that's how we do things in a democracy. Anyway, I've got a peach of a theory I'd like to uh, try on you for size. Well? Well, suppose someone who hated your husband figured Professor Schiller's death was a heaven-sent opportunity. I do not see how. Well, all this party would have to do is inform Margot Schiller that your husband was responsible for her husband's death. But who would do such a horrible thing? (laughs) What's your guess? Max Oppenheimer. (laughs) <laughs> it certainly is a small world. You thought of him, too? No, Maxwell thought of you. I do not understand. Oh, sure you do, Angel. You were the one who tipped off Margot Schiller, but you couldn't depend on her to do anything about it, so as the saying goes, you took matters into your own hands. You think I killed Vincent? Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I didn't think it was that funny. But it is. However, I would not tell it to the Berlin police. No, why not? Well, at four o'clock when Vincent was shot, I was at the Chancellery being interviewed by an officer named Hans Gerhardt. I wish to renew my driver's permit. But if you were at the Chancellery... Well, obviously, I could not be here at the hotel murdering my husband. Still, it was a most ingenious theory, Herr Waring. Drop by again if you ever think of another. <laughs> So, for the 999th time, I learned what it means to fall flat on your face. And after Gabrielle Christopher pulled the rug from under me, I picked myself up and took a stroll on Unter den Linden. When I didn't find inspiration there, I made for the nearest phone booth and dialed American intelligence. Unlike Shakespeare, I hoped there was something in a name. Intelligence, Major Thornhill speaking. Hello, Thorny, this is Mike Waring. Well, where the devil have you been? Out communing with nature. Well, hustle back here as fast as you can. We just picked up Max Loppenheimer. Wonderful. Not so wonderful. He refuses to talk. Well, maybe he needs lessons. Huh? Suppose we confront him with Margot Schiller. If she identifies him as the man who kidnapped her husband, that might do the trick. Say, it might at that. Yeah, well, keep your fingers crossed, soldier. I'll make it as fast as I can. <laughs> I understand you, Mr. Waring. You think if I had to identify this Maxwell Oppenheimer, it might induce him to confess? It might. Well, you don't seem too confident. 
Well, I was originally, but now I'm beset by doubts. I can see Maxwell admitting to your husband's murder, but not to Christopher's. Why not? For the obvious reason. He didn't do it. Well, then who did? Well, that's the question of the hour. You know, we discovered who tipped you off, that Christopher was the man responsible for your husband's kidnapping. Who? His wife, Gabrielle. Well, that doesn't make sense. Sure it does. She wanted to get rid of him, and she figured if you knew his name, you'd take care of it for him. But she must be insane. No, as a matter of fact, she's pretty clever. Because that's exactly what did happen. Are you suggesting... Yes, I am. Why didn't you let her do her own dirty work, Margot? That way it would have been easier on all of us. All right, Angel, let's go. Well, they just called for Paris Express passengers, Mike. I guess that means me, Major. Yeah, I guess it does. I'll bet you're happy to see me go. Well, I would have been happier if you never stopped by in the first place. Did you have to nail Margot Schiller for Christopher's murder? It was my job, Thony. Well, why couldn't it have been one of the others? Well, I wish it had been, too. But that's life for you. Every once in a while, the only decent actor in the cast has to be it. Believe me, I'm as sorry as you are that this was one of them. So long, Major. Major. 